Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending on where you are. My name is Mohamed Ghassimi. I'm an assistant professor of computer science at Michigan State University, and it's my pleasure to introduce myself as well as this course, CSE 477. CSE 477 is a class on web application development. And I'd like to start by telling you a little bit more about me, my background with respect to web development, and then also tell you at a high level what we're going to be covering in this class and why I think you should care about it. Okay, so first about me. Um, I've been a professor at Michigan State University for a couple of years now, and a lot of the work that I have done both before I was a professor at Michigan State uh, as well as um, during the time I've been a professor at MSU has had an, a component of it that's dealt with the deployment and development of user-facing applications that are almost always hosted through the World Wide Web. Um, there's a, a platform, for example, called Connect Maven that you could take a look at on the internet. I'll put a link to it below. And um, there's also a web application for looking through the content of scientific publications that I developed just last year with the National Institutes of Health. So I have a, quite a bit of hands-on experience developing these web applications. And I'd like to take a couple of minutes to now tell you why I think you should also take some time, uh, hopefully through this class, to learn about web application development. I think that the primary motivation for learning about the web is that effectively everything uses it. It is the predominant method of human communication in our time. And actually, that's really what the web is, right? It's a communication tool. It allows us to send information and to receive information from one machine to another machine, and thereby from person to person, uh, anywhere in the world, almost instantaneously. Now, there's a whole lot of nuance that goes into how that process works and a whole lot of technologies that goes into making that process easy for you and I as users. So as you're watching this video on YouTube, it's seamless, right? You visit a YouTube link, or you search on YouTube for the video, or uh, you click through to this link through the class uh, uh, course calendar, and then you just see me instantly. But there's a whole complex stack of technologies that underlie that, that make all of that seamless and possible and um, uh, not only possible if you're watching this from East Lansing, where it was recorded, but if you're watching it from New York City or Mumbai or Tokyo. And um, the ability to have that information readily available to people in a user-friendly way uh, that's accessible and high-performant is really what the backbone of web technologies do. So there's four components in this class that we're going to be talking about. The first component is about the internet itself. How does the internet work? What are those core technologies? What's the difference between an intranet, the internet, what is a DNS record, and what are the, the core uh, kind of languages or technologies or protocols that are necessary for the internet to work? The second thing we're going to be speaking about is the front end of the internet, the visual pieces of it. So when you go visit a website, the things you see with your eyes and that are fetched by your browser and interpreted by your browser, we're going to be speaking about those technologies uh, and how you develop them. We're also going to be talking about the processing, analysis, uh, computations that are necessary to finally package things up and ship them to that front end where you digest, enjoy, and experience them. Um, so think about the algorithm, for example, on YouTube that makes the recommendations. That's part of the back end, right? Whereas what you're seeing and touching and experiencing when you watch YouTube is part of the front end. So we're going to talk about both of those. And then lastly, we're going to speak about some of the infrastructural components that make uh, web applications possible. One of the big ones there are going to be databases. We're going to speak about uh, not only um, standard relational databases, uh, MySQL, uh, MariaDB, Postgres, that sort of thing. But we're also going to speak about uh, other kinds of databases, such as things that are stored in memory, graph databases, uh, NoSQL databases like Mongo. And we're going to talk about 
when you want, might want to use those if you're developing a web application and, and when you might want to uh, use another kind of database modality. The last thing that we'll be speaking about is asynchronous communication between web apps. So if you wanted to have, let's say, chat built into a web app, or um, you wanted to have a user's action trigger an event somewhere on an IoT device or something like that, what are the technology suites that you use to do that? And how do you make that scalable and performant so that if you're going to access it, again, in Tokyo versus New York City versus East Lansing, the users all have the same experience. All of those topics together are going to give you an insight into how to build a high-performing web application. Now, let's speak through some of the reasons why you might want to learn to build a high-performing web application. If you think about professions like, let's think about medicine as an example, it's an incredible career path that people take. You're saving lives, uh, you're impacting people in a very physical, concrete, tangible way. It's really wonderful. But the only thing that's challenging when you're engaged in a profession like medicine is that you're limited by the scale of what your, your own two hands can accomplish, right? So you can't, if you're a surgeon, operate on two people simultaneously. At least no, no surgeon I've ever met can do that. What's really exciting about computer science and web application, I think, really highlights and emphasizes this, is the scale at which you can touch people's lives when you develop technologies. So if you develop a web application that allows people to consume videos like YouTube does, search documents in the web like Google does, uh, download music, uh, meet new friends, you can, within a matter of hours, have anybody on the entire planet touching what you've built and having their lives impacted on it. So I think as a computer scientist and uh, you know, generally, but then also as a person who develops web applications specifically, there's a really unprecedented opportunity to touch people's lives with technology you develop. And mastering this stack will give you the skills you need in order to do that. So I wanna just say, I'm really excited to have all of you engaged in this content. Um, I'm delighted to be teaching this. I think it's, if you master some of the things that we go through in this course, I think it will set you up for a professional trajectory, but not just professional, but also a personal kind of trajectory that's really going to be exciting and open lots of opportunities. So uh, with that, welcome to CSE 477. And I look forward to having interactions with you throughout the semester.